Hi, I'm Kathy Hansel. I've been a friend of Suzanne's for the last 20 or so years. And I have so many happy memories of my time with her. I just wanted to pick a, a few of those and share them with you. Um, we met under really very random circumstances. Usually you meet a friend because you have a friend who know them, they introduce you, and that's how you get to know them. Suzanne was a perfect stranger who had come up to this area from LA, attended a Doctor Who meeting that I'd been attending that had been around since 1980-something, stood up and said, hi, I'm Suzanne, I'm going to a convention in LA, and I need somebody to share the hotel cost with me. Is there anybody here that would be willing to do that? And I said yes, and it changed my life forever. I'm so fortunate that I was the first one to stand up. So we exchanged our information, we um, set up our flights, we met when we landed, she got a rental car, and that started a tradition of traveling companions for the next 20 years of that convention. And the monthly meetings that were the ones that she attended. So I got to see Suzanne with Doctor Who as my platform every month for 20 years. We would spend time together. And over that time, there were always traditions we had at the convention. It was called Gallifrey. And we had a specific schedule. We started driving to save the cost of airfare. We had specific stops along the road, along the way. And once we got to LA, we had specific foods. El Pollo Loco was an absolute <laughs> must because there wasn't one near Oakland. And then um, Ozo cookies were always, we brought food with us, and that's a family tradition of those pink and white circus looking cookies. <laughs> And another tradition, because the convention was always President's Day weekend, right after Valentine's Day, conveniently at least one day after, my husband would go to the Godiva store when chocolates were on sale for half price <laughs> and get us a box of chocolates to take with us to share during the convention. So over the years, as I got to know Suzanne better, I learned how many of our joys in life overlapped. And you've already heard some of this. Um, British programs, cats, gardening. I would come up and spend the weekend at her house, and we would go to the Oakland Zoo, where I had a membership. And again, we had a very specific pattern of what we did. We would get there when the zoo opened, and the first thing we did was head right to where the tigers were. So you've heard about little cats. Let me tell you about the big cats. <laughs> Now, the tigers at the Oakland Zoo have a viewing platform at the front, and then if you walk around, there's a viewing platform at the back. And of course, that's what we did. We looked at the tigers from the front, and then a few minutes later, we'd work our way up the hill and look at those same tigers from the back and be just as excited to be seeing them again. From the tigers, we then went to the lions, and the lions had multiple viewing platforms and we would visit each one of those viewing platforms. And then, not quite a feline, but our third stop was always the meerkats. <laughs> Cat, meerkat, I don't know. Just the adorable little tunnels and standing up on their hind feet. After that, wherever else we went in the zoo was kind of random. So Suzanne and I shared the things that make you happy and do you know how fortunate I am to have had somebody so that any one of these, in the gardening, the roses that I have in my yard, she, Marlise, and I picked out at Reagan Nursery. And I'd never planted anything in my life. I moved in, it was all rocks. So those roses are still blooming today. I watched her plant her backyard, and as Susan said, the water feature, it was solar powered. So that meant there was some hardware involved in putting it up and letting it run. She taught me about the bulbs. There were hyacinths that we got together and put in. The British programs, OK, I didn't completely get into the trains and the train travels, but the Doctor Who and the other books. So from those, when we were at Gallifrey, the convention, 
Two other things that we did, she was adamant that we hit the hot tub, the jacuzzi. So when the rest of the convention went on in the evening, we would duck out and go and sit in the jacuzzis. Now this was rain or shine, so it rarely rains in LA, but when it did, we would take towels to wrap around our head so that our hair would stay dry while the rest of us were was submerged. So that was number one. Second was, she always brought a book to read before the lights went out. And I was stunned one day when I looked to see what she was reading. This was recreational reading. It was in French. <laughs> Definitely bilingual, multilingual, and even her recreational work expanded beyond just plain English. So we shared the good times together. We um, also shared some of the hardships in our life and stood by each other. So as she had breast cancer, I'd come up to her house, helped her wash her hair. She couldn't raise her hands. And my husband, when he was struck with an injury that confined him to a wheelchair about nine years ago, while he was in the hospital, Suzanne came to my house and helped carry, it's a two-story house, everything upstairs that could be lifted so that we could pull up the carpet and make the floor smooth for my husband's wheelchair. I can't tell you how many steps and how many hours that took. And then once the carpet was pulled up, she came back and helped carry it all down again. So it, it is um, a very special person that can be with you in the good times and in the bad times. And so I want to talk not just about her friendship, but also about her spirit. <laughs> Because when she and I would talk, she would listen, she would be calm, and she'd come alongside me saying just the right thing that intuitively captured whatever it was that my heart needed to hear at that time. She was amazing in that way. So above all, she was always kind and always generous. So we had um, one other connection. She and I were both computer programmers. So data security analyst, Suzanne working on mainframes, I was a computer programmer working on mini computers, slightly smaller computers. But we shared that in common. And so one of my favorite memories, one of the last things that I did with Suzanne is she and I went to see the movie together called Hidden Figures. Now this is a movie about the women, three remarkable women, brilliant mathematicians, who were the first to compute by hand before there were machines that computed. And in fact, part of the story was the very first IBM coming in to take over what people had done by hand with this programming language called Fortran. Now, Suzanne and I know what those are. We know what they were saying. We shared that together. So that was yet another special link with her. And so the last story I want to share with you is through all of this, I think you understood how smart, how brilliant Suzanne was, how honest she was. I'm going to share a story with a slight bit of dishonesty in it. It was one of the first times that we rented a car down at Gallifrey. We drove from the airport to the hotel and then from the hotel back to the airport. Maybe, maybe a total of 30 miles the whole time. And of course, your contract says you're going to fill the gas tank before you bring the car back. We pulled into the gas station, and these two brilliant women, neither of us could figure out how to open the gas tank. <laughs> We opened, we looked on the floor, nope, there's no handle. We looked in the glove box, nope, there's no handle. We looked all over the car, nothing that we could see. We opened the trunk, do we, no, nope, nothing there, nothing there. The, the gas cap, cap lid is closed, no manual. So we looked at each other and we said, well, let's just turn it in. So we took it back without filling it out and at the, de at the return, learned that this is one of those magic cars that if your car key is in the ignition, all you have to do is press the gas cap and it pops open. 
Okay, so, so I can just imagine if there's any video surveillance of the two of us climbing in and out of that car <laughs> trying to figure out how to open it. So, um, Suzanne brought, gave me a, a treasured gift that I want to show you, that I brought with me, that I think kind of brings all of this together. About 15 years ago, she came back from the UK. And this is a Christmas decoration <laughs> that shows tabby cats with Christmas pudding that you string up across your house. And for 15 years, this has gone up and especially this year, it was the first decoration I put up. It's the last one I took down. But it has given me joy every year and will continue to give me joy. As I, I put off writing my notes here for a long time because coming and saying this means she's really gone. And that is heartbreaking to me. But being able to tell the stories of the years and the personality and the joy and the special gift we all had in knowing this remarkable friend, loving woman, really is worth every tear. Those tears are going to fade and she will be in our hearts, always alive, always a mentor, always an example and always a joy. Thank you.